CEO and co-founder of Distributed Bio. We are a contract research organization that performs antibody discovery and optimization for pharmaceutical companies. So we work with uh, 50 different pharmaceutical companies who come to us and say, hey, I've got a cool drug target. I need you to make an antibody against it, make it fast and make it well. And we're good at that. And so we were well positioned uh, in January to have the right tools to attack the new problem when it struck. I wanted to come up with a way to save months of work. And what I did was I analyzed the, in the novel coronavirus and all SARS from 20 years ago. And I was able to do that because scientists were sharing, sharing their sequences of the coronavirus already um, on the internet. And when I looked at them, they weren't that different. These are cousins. And so I looked up a series of anti-SARS antibodies that were neutralizing from discovered almost 20 years ago. And, and I, I knew I had this technology that I could take an antibody and perform like a, a tweaking or a polishing step. And so I figured that what I could do is piggyback on that existing research of the anti-SARS antibodies and adjust them to neutralize the novel coronavirus. You don't only want to have a vaccine. And the, the problem is, first off, it takes a long time. It takes six or seven weeks to establish immunity. So that does not work for you if you are already sick. If you're in a hospital and you receive a vaccine, by the time it's had time to take effect, you are either recovered anyway or you are dead. So that is not appropriate for, for people who are sick. Uh, the other problem with, is that it depends on you having a working immune system. So if you're immunocompromised or you're elderly, vaccines don't work very well. And unfortunately for coronavirus, those are the two populations that are at greatest risk here. So that is not the only medicine you want to have in your poor chest. So an antibody skips the middleman. And when you inject it into your body, within 20 minutes, it's around in your body and it's giving you protection. So that's a medicine you can give to someone who's in a hospital uh, and sick, and it's going to treat them. The, the downsides are... It'll only last about eight weeks. That's still way better than pills, um, but it's not permanent. Uh, and it's more expensive. The true cost of goods is more like $100 a shot. And so we're gonna produce something in a reasonable range that it can be distributed, but it's, it's more expensive than a vaccine. We know that some of these antibodies, we've successfully converted them to recognize the novel coronavirus. We're running the, uh, they're called kinetics tests. They're basically testing how strong the binding is. And what we're looking for is a very strong binder against the novel coronavirus that hits and neutralizes in the same way as the SARS binders. Um, the stronger the binding, the smaller the dose you can offer to an individual, and the more practical it is to get away from a big IV bag to just a little shot in the arm. The next steps are we have partnership with a company in the area that's able to produce a lot of the drug quickly. The U.S. military, U.S. AMRID, is going to receive our medicines and they're going to go test them in to their ability in their biosafety laboratories to neutralize the novel coronavirus. And unlike vaccines that you can't give to a sick person because a vaccine takes many weeks to take effect, an antibody works right away. So these are very fast studies. You go and you give the drug to 600 people that have, uh, they're in a hospital, they're in an ICU or, or are seriously affected. And over the next 10 days, you know whether that protected them or not. You're literally counting the people who survived. That's your, that's your measure of success. Uh, and if that looks good, then the next step would be you could start releasing hundreds of thousands or even millions of doses through something called compassionate use or expanded access. And this is something that was done in the Ebola crisis and other crises where you have a great medical need and no existing medicine, and there's one that's still waiting at FDA approval, but you have evidence that is effective. It's still, that's still September. That's still frustratingly slow, but it, by my estimation, that is the fastest way that we can deliver a medicine that is certainly much faster than the vaccines.